Happy Mother's Day, Kenya. All you mothers, happy Mother's Day. Those that are in the back, moms, happy Mother's Day. Let's all stand. We're going to open our service in prayer. Good to be with God's people. Amen. 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 All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this very special day. Thank you for moms. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with, with godly women. And uh, Lord, we, we thank you for all the women that are in our lives, especially our moms, our grandmothers. And Father, we pray that you would bless today as we worship you. Uh, Lord, we're so grateful for your created order. We're so grateful for um, every good and perfect gift that comes from above, including mothers. And I pray today that, that we would be able to bless moms, be a special blessing to them. And then, Father, I pray that in everything we do today, we would magnify the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to lift Him up above all, that You would be glorified. And we ask Your blessing in every aspect of our services today. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Please remain standing. All right, sticker hymnals will open up to Hymn 559, For the Beauty of the Earth, Hymn 559. All right, just a couple of announcements. On uh, June 4th, Dr. Alan Griffith will be preaching during both morning and evening service. So if he hasn't been here for a little bit, so uh, please come and uh, enjoy what he has to tell us. And uh, this is from uh, Josh Noble, and of course it's a very small print. So, hello everyone. It's been a while, but I'm excited to give you an update on what is happening with my trip. I am so pleased to say that I am well over 100% supported, thanks to you and how God has used you. The Lord also answered a huge prayer request with my visa being approved, my plane tickets have been bought, and pretty much everything else has been set. I will be leaving on May 22nd. I am very excited to see what the Lord will do this summer. Please continue to pray that traveling would be smooth and easy that the Lord would provide opportunities to share the gospel with the people there and that he would go before me to prepare the hearts of those I meet. 
Thank you for partnering with me in Christ, Josh. All right, this time I have the ushers come forward as we take our general offering. Let's bow in a, a prayer for the offering. Dear Lord, we just thank you for what you have done, Lord, the money you raised for Josh, Lord. We thank you for uh, his willingness to, to go and, and uh, spread your word, Lord. Open hearts and minds that he would have uh, eager ears to hear, the, hear uh, your, your word, hear what he has to say. Lord, thank you for providing for this church, and we ask that you continue to provide, Lord, and we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Garrett. All right, if you have your Bibles, please turn to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1. So glad that you're here today. Looking forward to uh, sitting under the Word together, worshiping God. And um, our text this morning is 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, the first five verses. So when you get there, please stand with me for the reading of God's Word. And by the way, if uh, some of you, because Dr. Griffith hasn't been here in a while, uh, if you wonder who is E. Allen Griffith, uh, when we started this church uh, over 30 years ago, uh, he was the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Westchester. He was the one really uh, that was in the leadership when we planted this church so long ago. 
And uh, it's a blessing for me to still consider him my pastor. Uh, he's been my pastor for decades, though. I only sat under his ministry for five years. Uh, he has a podcast called By the Book that's on YouTube and, and uh, various sundry podcasts. Uh, if you have podcasts available, just type in uh, By the Book. And uh, he just did one recently, the last few days, on trials and a uh, big blessing. So that's who's going to be here, both morning and evening. I hope you'll really support him. Um, you know, I, I sent him a text. I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm praying that we'll have a good turnout on Sunday night. And he graciously said, we don't control who comes on Sunday night or how many. And, uh, but I do want to control it. I want to encourage you to be here on Sunday night that night. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Uh, please follow along as I read the first five verses. The Bible says, Paul... An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our, our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing... I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. May God bless his word. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, the godly heritage that Timothy had uh, that went back to his grandmother. And uh, Lord, I pray today that as we acknowledge and consider uh, the blessing of how you worked in Timothy's life through godly women, that we might be a blessing to the many godly women today, uh, the, the people that have influenced us so much. And I pray, Father, that you would bless the word today. Uh, perhaps there are some listening or here that have not experienced the new birth. They've not been born again, the Bible way. And we pray that you'd open their eyes to the glorious light of the gospel. And that whatever they are trusting in, other than the finished work of Jesus Christ, that they would cast it all aside and put their soul faith and what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. And we'll give you the glory and the praise. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And you may be seated. Again, we'll turn to hymn 557. Now thank we all our God. Hymn 557. Father, now he 
Please take your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and again, happy Mother's Day to you, especially you moms, and uh, we are going to take a break from the, the message I preached last Sunday, which we'll pick up with next Sunday on rejoicing in the Lord. I want to remind you about that because I almost forgot. Uh, and it probably would not be the first time when I planned to do a two-parter and then forgotten preached on something else. But this week, this next week, I'll remember. Today, uh, we're going to talk about moms. And we're going to talk about one mom in particular, uh, but not just her. We're going to talk about um, what made her a mom, her son, Timothy. And then we're also going to talk about the influence that uh, created faith in her, the reason she had uh, a special kind of faith, uh, apparently was the influence of her mother. And so we're going to look at uh, Timothy today, uh, along with his grandmother Lois and his mother uh, Eunice. And we're going to see and, and just look at uh, the title of the message today is A Mother's Faith. Let's bow in prayer. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the people that we will someday meet in heaven, uh, like Timothy and Eunice and Lois. and We look forward to getting to know them for all eternity. We thank you, Lord, for their, their special faith that was imparted to their grandson, their son, that ended up being such a blessing to the Apostle Paul and to the gospel ministry of the early church. And uh, Father, we would ask you to bless the scriptures to us today. Help us to glorify you. Help us to honor moms. Help us to preach Christ. Help us to see the saved or the lost saved. And we ask your blessing now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. A week ago, this last Thursday, I had the opportunity to, um, to meet again someone that I knew from my childhood, somebody that grew up in the neighborhood. Uh, as I was with my dad uh, at the assisted living facility, uh, this, this young lady was there, this lady was there, uh, and her mom was on the same unit my dad is on. Uh, his, her mom had cancer, and um, it was good to get reacquainted and, and touch base. Uh, sadly, this Wednesday, this past Wednesday, she posted this. She said, I wish I had one more day. It is with a broken heart to share that my precious mother and best friend passed away this morning at 7 a.m. She fought hard, never complained, and joked along the way. I'm just going to read bits of it. Uh, family was her passion, never missing a single gathering. She was a friend to many, offering a kind word and a big smile. I love you, Mom. I miss you already, and it has only been 11 hours. Rest peacefully. And thank you for being my mom and my role model. I am proud to be your daughter. You are a beautiful example of all that is good in the world. Until we are together again. And then she quotes the, the, the song that Garrett just played. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. You pray for this family as they grieve the loss of their dear mom. But that reminded me of a, of a quote that uh, one of the founding fathers of America, Benjamin Rush, who uh, from, from all writings seems to be that he is our brother in the Lord, uh, that he was a man of faith. And uh, he made this statement about mothers. And he said, It is agreeable to observe how differently modern writers and the inspired author of the Proverbs describes a fine woman. The one is admi admired abroad. The other is honored and beloved at home. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. There is no fame in the world equal to this. Nor is there a note in music half so delightful as the respectful language with which a grateful son or daughter perpetuates the memory of a sensible and affectionate mother. And uh, how true that is. Uh, to honor moms. What, you know, the world can laud and has through history 
praised many women, notable women, that you and I would recognize their name. But nothing is so honorable as honor, honor at home, those who knew us closest. One, one pastor wrote this in a devotional. He said, the Bible is filled with examples of great mothers. Hannah, Elizabeth, Mary, the Shunammite woman, Eunice, and Jochebed. You know who Jochebed is? Moses' mom. But don't worry, I didn't know who it was either. I'm like, who is Jochebed again? I had to look it up. Uh, he goes on and he says, um, Abraham Lincoln said, and I quote, I remember my mother's prayers and they have followed me. They have clung to me all my life. All that I am, I hope to, all that I am and hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. This world would never have known the ministries of Hudson Taylor John and Charles Wesley, except they had praying mothers. Praying mothers, women of faith. We're going to look today first at a son um, that uh, a, a lady influenced, two ladies influenced in a major way. Uh, in fact, this, this young man in, in Scripture uh, is praised so highly by the Apostle Paul that he was one of a kind. Uh, there were, you know, a lot of people in ministry that helped Paul, but uh, Timothy was the cream of the crop and, crop, and he actually says some things about Timothy. And then it goes back to, I believe, what we have here. You know, how did Timothy come to faith? Timothy had a prime example, two examples in his own home, and it wasn't his dad. It was his mom, godly mom, and his godly grandmother. And they had such an influence on Timothy that Paul talks about it. And we're going to talk about it today. We're going to look at three things, really three people. We're going to see uh, a son's faith, a son's genuine faith. And then we're going to see a mom's genuine faith. And then we're going to see a grandmother's genuine faith. Let's bow in prayer. Father, help us this morning. I do want to pray for... Um, the Milford family, Father, I pray that you would comfort them. And I thank you, Lord, that I was able to reconnect with this family and for this dear mom that I wish I got to touch base with her and say hello again. I just pray that you would comfort her husband and uh, her, her daughters, her grandchildren. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just minister to them as only you can. You are the God of all comfort. And then, Father, I pray that you would bless us today as we open your word. Help us to realize just how special a, a mother's faith is and the impact that it can have in her children and in her grandchildren. And we ask your blessing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh, first, we see we're going to talk about a, a son, because in order to be a mom, you have to have offspring. And we're going to get one particular offspring who was a son, and his name was Timothy. So look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. Paul's writing to him. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Timothy was Paul's spiritual son, um, and, and he viewed, uh, Timothy viewed Paul as his spiritual father. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. This is interesting because the wording that Paul's using now, pure conscience, he's going to continue that theme because he's thinking of Timothy's faith, Timothy's mother's faith, and Timothy's grandmother's faith. And so he's, he begins even before to talk about uh, pure, something that's pure, something that's untainted. And he first says, uh, again, with pure conscience, I thank God, that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Paul thought often about Timothy. Such a blessing. He rehearsed in his mind. He could see Timothy's face and rehearse some of the interactions that they had over the years and how Timothy responded 
to Paul's instruction and Paul's teaching. Uh, and there were many hours spent because Paul would tell Timothy, the things that thou hast heard among me, among many, many witnesses, those same things commit to faithful men. So there had been a lot of time there. And Paul would think about Timothy's response and how precious it was. It was such a blessing to him uh, that Paul wanted to be edified and he would think about Timothy. So he says, night and day, and then verse 4 is where we begin. He says, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears. So in these thoughts, as Paul was re reflecting on Timothy, he was reflecting on a tender heart. He was remembering uh, more than one time, I believe, Timothy would tear up and, and, and cry because he was so tender-hearted. When I think of somebody being tender-hearted, I can't help but think of Captain Smiley, Jim Sonino. Some of you know him, some of you don't. Forgive me for those. Uh, that guy would cry at the drop of a hat. Would he not? He had a tender heart. Still has a tender heart, I believe. I haven't seen him cry in a few years. Uh, but what a blessing. And he had such a tender heart. And Timothy was that way. He, he remembered his tears because Timothy had a tender heart to the things of God. He says that I may be filled with joy. And then he says in verse 5 now, here's the big blessing. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned, that's a key word we're going to be looking at. Because Paul uses this to describe Timothy's faith. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. So this, this great recollection, this sweet reminiscing of, the apostle, or of, of Timothy uh, had to do with his unfeigned faith. What does that mean, unfeigned? Well, the word unfeigned, will not surprise you, means not faint or not... Um, not pretend it, not simulate it. You know, it, it. In other words, it was sincere. It was genuine. It was true. It was real. Not everybody's faith is, is sincere and, and real and genuine. Some people have, and forgive me for using this word. My, one of my sons gives me a hard time because I'm using it every time I can. Some people have a faux faith. You know, faux as in faux painting, and I know I'm abusing this word, but some people have a fake faith. It's not real. It's not genuine. It's shallow. It's pretend. It's hypocritical. Timothy didn't have that. He had a pure, genuine faith. And, and what a blessing it was. So let's talk about Timothy. Before we talk about the influence in Timothy's life, which was his mother and his grandmother, Timothy had a genuine faith. It was a real thing. Paul would write in Philippians chapter 2, and you don't need to turn there, but uh, this is what he said about Timothy in his writing to the church in Philippi. He said, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus, that's Timothy, shortly unto you, that I also may, may be of good comfort when I know your state. Now he's talking about Timothy now in verse 20. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. In other words, there's no one else that is like Timothy in this area that, that because of his faith being genuine, he will naturally care. I can trust him. He said, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And I believe, the, the more I think and study on this, he wasn't slamming, you know, Apollos or, or you know, all Barnabas and all the people that had served him. He's making a general statement, uh, as we often will do with the English language or with language. And he was saying, basically, Timothy, you know, there's not many people like Timothy. Most people, I, they, they seek their own. Most people are selfish. Not Timothy. Uh, again, verse... Um, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Verse 22. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he hath served me in the gospel. With, uh, him, therefore, I hope to send presently as soon as I shall see how it will go with me. What a praise of Timothy. I mean, what, what comments that Paul, of all the people, Paul trusted Timothy and he was going to send him to him 
And, and he gives these words that, you know what? So many people today are self-seeking. And, uh, you know, it, it's almost maybe he was, maybe Paul was thinking of Alexander the coppersmith or Hymenius and Philetus and, uh, or even maybe Demas, people that had served him and ended up being faux ministers, you know. And maybe he was thinking of them. And, and for that reason, Timothy became all the more special because Timothy, he could trust Timothy. He knew Timothy was the real deal. He was genuine. What praise he has. Now, Paul met Timothy, Timothy's family, actually, on his second missionary journey. We read about it in Acts chapter 16. Uh, he was, uh, met his whole family when he went to Lystra. That's where Timothy was from. Uh, that's when he met Eunice, who was Timothy's mom, who was a Jewess. A Jew was Jewish, uh, who had married a Greek. And uh, so let's back up for a minute before we look at Timothy and his family situation. Let's look at this idea of the unfeigned faith that is in, in him. Because unfeigned faith, the Greek word that is translated unfeigned, is a term that is used elsewhere in Scripture. Just listen to some of these other usages so you understand what we're talking about that made Timothy unique. His faith. Romans 12, 9, the Bible says, Paul says, let love be without dissimulation. Wow, there's a big old word, isn't it? That's the same Greek word that is translated unfeigned. Let love be without dissimulation. In other words, let love be without hypocrisy. Paul's, or excuse me, Timothy's faith was without hypocrisy. 2 Corinthians 6, 6 Paul said, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. Second time, Paul talks about this. He uses this word unfeigned uh, to talk about love, that it's pure, it's, it's genuine. And then we have 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Paul says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. So he uses, a lot of times he uses this word unfeigned to talk about love. In our text, in Timothy, he's using it to talk about faith. And then finally, in James 3.17, you might be familiar with this passage. James says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, Without partiality, without hypocrisy. And that word hypocrisy is the same word that is used in unfeigned faith. It's a faith that there was nothing fake about Timothy. He was the genuine. He was the real deal. And Paul got to know him. And that became very special to him. You know, we need to be the real deal. Our faith needs to be real. It's so easy to play Christian or to play church. And God wants us to be the real thing. Which means we may not always appear to be as good as we want to appear to be, but God, this idea of genuineness is so important to God. We don't have to be perfect. And we don't have to care. In fact, we should not care about what other people think about us. What matters is, what does God know us to be? We can humbly just walk before God, not as, a, not as we want to be, but as we really are. So Timothy, first I, I mentioned in Acts chapter 16, that's when Paul, in his second missionary journey, went to Lystra, met this family, and it says in Acts 16, and, and um, Acts chapter 16, and verse 1. Then came he, that's Paul, to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, that's Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed. But his father was a Greek. So his wife, uh, Timothy's mom rather, was Jewish. And Timothy's dad was Greek, but the way it's worded, in fact, the Greek word that is used, uh, is used, it's an adjective in the New Testament that is generally used to express the fact that his father was a heathen. 
So we're not just talking about Jew and Gentile, because many Gentiles would get saved. But this seems to be a term where it implies, and, and the, the way it's worded, his mom was Jewish and she believed. But, contrast that, and the idea is that his dad was a heathen. His dad, so, so the influence of the gospel in Timothy's life, maybe what made him ripe to get saved when Paul came to Lystra, uh, was not the influence of his dad. It was the influence of his godly mother. What a, what a blessing. You know, any parent, especially a parent of faith, uh, can agree with and, and sympathize with John's statement in 3 thir- John verse 4. John said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Every godly parent, every godly grandparent, their greatest joy is to hear that their children walk in truth. No no better, no greater, greater thing. I want to ask you something. And those of you that are online, what about your mother? What about your mother? Are you a son or a daughter whose mother has been praying for you for years? To have real, genuine faith. I know a lot of our moms. They have genuine faith. And a lot of people that have sat in these chairs have been sons or daughters of some very praying moms. And as I'm saying this, I know there's a bunch of moms that are like, oh, why can't my child be here right now? Hey, it's online. You can ask your, say, you want to do me, want to give me a Mother's Day present? Listen to this message. So, to you children out there that are listening to this after, your mom's prayed for you. Your mom loves you. Your mom wants nothing more than for you to have a genuine, sincere faith. There was a famous skeptic, maybe you've heard of him, Robert Ingersoll. He would go around and do debates against professing Christians. And one day when he was uh, at his height in fame, He went to give a lecture at a college to, again, tear Christianity to shreds. And um, as the two of the students that sat under his lecture were walking away, one of them said to the other, well, I guess he knocked the props out from under Christianity, didn't he? And the friend looked at him and said, no, I don't think he did. He said, Ingersoll did not explain my mom's life. And until he can explain my mom's life, I will stand by my mother's God. Wow. You know, we have many godly women in our church. And one of the godly women that's not right here right now because she's back serving is named Lynn Noble. Our associate pastor's wife. a, A woman of faith. You know, she influenced her daughter, Janine. And her other daughter, and her two sons. But she influenced her daughter, who is now on the mission field. And now, we just heard that uh, one of her sons is going to be going uh, to spend the summer on the mission field, serving the Lord with their daughter. What a blessing. Now, God doesn't call everyone in the mission field. uh, But what a blessing that you and I have seen before us uh, that two, and the other two children as well, one of them here, are definitely walking with the Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing. We have that living out right in front of us. Uh, and, and we can thank God. Now, I, I mentioned to Charlie, by the way, I said, now, it wasn't only your wife that had the influence. You, you had a little bit to do with it, probably. Uh, but what an impact a godly mom can make. A, a mother of faith. So let's talk about this, this mother. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, Paul says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned, that's not fake, not pretend, not simulated, the real, genuine, true faith that is in thee. And then it says in a little bit, And it was in thy mother Eunice. I skipped the grandmother. We're going to go back to her. Uh, but we're going to talk about Timothy's mom Eunice. For I am persuaded that in thee also. Interesting. The the mother 
um, Eunice was uh, the one, one that had a big impact. His grandmother also had a big impact. But listen to what Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. He says to Timothy, But continue thou in the things that thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now, Paul was one of them. He preached the gospel. And, um, but there was an influence before Paul came on board. And he says in verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Some of you godly moms brought your children up unto the scriptures. And you have not seen the fruition of that yet. But I want to tell you, I thank God every day for the influence of parents and a mom that feared God. I grew up, we were in church every Sunday. And when I first heard the gospel, I probably very likely would have rejected it if I did not first have a rock solid foundation of believing in God, that there is a God. So I wonder, some of you, was that your beginning? Was that, are you like Timothy? From a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Another pastor wrote this in a devotional he said, the Bible sadly announces in Proverbs 30 and verse 11, there is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. And he says, while no mother is sinless or perfect, everyone ought to be thankful for the one who went through the travail of death to give us life. How shameful that we live in a day when many dishonor and disrespect their mothers. Emerson once said, men are what their mothers make them. Abraham Lincoln said, No one is poor who had a godly mother. Evangelist Billy Sunday preached, I don't think there are enough devils in hell to take a young person from the arms of a godly mother. What a difference the right kind of a mother can make in a home, in a church, and in our nation. God seems to indicate that the last deterrent before a nation slips into total depravity is the righteousness of women. And he quotes... Romans 1.26, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Wow. That's a sad thought, isn't it? The last sign of a nation going down is when, when mothers stop being godly. There's a famous Baptist preacher. I think he's Baptist. He might not be. G. Campbell Morgan. He had four sons. Uh, they had four sons that also became preachers, all four of them. And one day, all the family was gathered around with some visitors. And uh, one of the guests wanted to kind of test the mettle of one of the sons named Howard. And uh, just, you know, see and, and test him. So he asked Howard in the middle of the table when everyone was looking. And he said, hey, Howard, who's the greatest preacher in your family? I mean, you got Dad, who was a famous preacher. His three brothers and himself are preachers first thing he did was he looked at his dad and without hesitation he said my mother <laughs> my mother that was the greatest impact greatest preacher was his mom and timothy might be able to tell us the same thing because at home timothy had the influence of the real deal a genuine not a perfect but a genuine uh, not fake not hypocritical, a genuine mom who had genuine faith. So, we're going to talk about now that we have this godly mother, uh, um, Eunice, which, by the way, I wrote it down and I'm trying to look for the notes. Eunice, uh, we are more familiar with the, the name, um, like, I don't know anyone named Eunice, but the, there's a, the, name, the main name that's from Latin is someone that's very f familiar. And I, I just, I don't think I deleted it. And I'm not going to say um, Veronica, because it might not be Veronica. 
If I see it, I'll shout it out all of a sudden midstream. Um, thank you. But, but so there's, there was this, this woman that influenced him so much that when Paul thinks of Timothy, he thinks of his unfeigned faith that was in his mom. And first, he says, in fact, if you look at it, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother. So, most likely, the dad uh, may have been a great dad in other ways, but that's not where Timothy saw the example of faith lived out. It was in his mom and in his grandmother. In fact, it was first the grandmother, Lois, who impacted her daughter, Eunice, who then impacted her son, Timothy. So let's close by talking about a mother's genuine faith. That is the, the mother or the grandmother uh, of, of Timothy, the mother of Eunice. Uh, that's where Paul first saw this genuine faith and how powerful it is. Charles Spurgeon made this statement. He said, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the prayers of my good mother. And, and probably Timothy's mom would say the same. I remember her once praying, Now, Lord, if my children go on in sin, it will not be from ignorance that they perish. And my soul must bear swift witness against them at the day of judgment if they lay not hold on Christ and claim his, Him as their personal Savior. I wonder if anyone listening right now, if you, your moms could say that. Again, she said, Now, Lord, if my children go on in sin, it will not be from ignorance that they perish. And my soul must bear swift witness against them at the day of judgment if they lay not hold on Christ and claim Him as their personal Savior. What is keeping you from laying hold on Christ? If it wasn't your mom, and it, and it probably can't be, then, then your mom would give swift witness against you. Oh, what a tragic thing. I read the story of a, down from down South Florida of a mom uh, whose son, a uh, young son, was running out. As he ran out the door, he said, Mom, I'm going to go swim in our swimming hole in the back. Uh, just took off and ran down there. She was in the kitchen looking out the window. and uh, No sooner had her son got to the little lake, the swimming hole, and just dove right in and started swimming to the middle that she saw an alligator uh, coming and, and like swimming towards her son. She dropped everything and ran out screaming for her son, warning him about that alligator. And she, you know, as soon as he heard, he turned around and started to swim. She ran down as fast as she could. She got there right as he was approaching the dock. She reached out her hand right as the alligator grabbed that young man's feet. And thus began a great tug of war as that mom fought viciously clinging to her son's hands to save her son and screaming. And eventually a, a, a neighbor was driving by and heard the cries, grabbed a shotgun and ran out and shot the alligator in time to save the boy. He was in the hospital for a few weeks and as he was healing, uh, the mom's heroic efforts and the neighbor's aid uh, made headlines. The newspapers came and interviewed him and one of the reporters that was interviewing the son said, let me see your scars. So he lifted up his, his pant legs to show, uh, but then real quickly he said, oh, but let me show you. Let me show you the scars in my arms. And he pulled up, and sure enough, there were scars from his mom clinging to him. And, and he said, and he was more proud of them than he was the alligator scars. He said, these are the scars that I got because, let me make sure I... Um, I want, to, I want to read this right. He said, look at my arms. I have great scars on my arms too. I have them because my mom wouldn't let go. God bless moms who won't let go of their kids. God bless moms that are wrestling before the throne for the souls of their children. And I've heard many of them weep. I have seen many of them uh, heartbroken because... And I would encourage you moms, just hang on to those kits. Spiritually, as you do battle, hang on. 
someday, when they appreciated it, they'll show the scars and it will be a, a trophy uh, when they come to know Christ. I close with this. I love Fanny Crosby and uh, Fanny Crosby loved to share the gospel. And she, uh, she would share the gospel with anyone that would listen. And in 1869, she penned the words, and I love this hymn, Rescue the Perishing. And she was asked about the song, and she said, Well, I wrote that uh, following a personal experience that I had at the New York City Bowery Mission. Uh, she said that every, she would go once a week to the mission, Bowery Mission in New York, and she would go there just to talk to what she affectionately called was my boys. You know, there'd be different people that would come in that were destitute, boys that came off the street, and she just had this endearing affection for them and would give the gospel every time. And one night, she was talking to her boys, and uh, the thought came on her mind for some reason that there was one of these boys that was a wanderer and had wandered away from the gospel influence, had wandered away and so she exhorted them um, she uh, made a plea to each boy that night that that I just I sense that one of you this is your last chance to get saved to come to the Lord and when the meeting broke up one of the young boys came up and said Miss Crosby are you talking about me I promised my mom before she died that I'd be with her in heaven and if I died as I am now, I wouldn't see her. And so Fanny Crosby had the, the privilege of leading that young man to Christ. And after he finished praying and, and being dealt with, he said confidently with a smile, Now I am ready to meet my mother in heaven, for I have found God. What a blessing. Godly mother, a, a, a mother's faith. Genuine faith. Praise the Lord for the Timothys in the world, but think of the influence of Timothy's mom and Timothy's grandma. There was no strong man in that house. There was no man to be a leader spiritually. But it's okay. Timothy came to Christ and was ripe for the gospel when Paul came to Lystra on his second missionary journey because of the years of work that that mom and that grandmother had done. It was not in vain. Let's pray. Father, I pray today, thanking you for the godly mothers, uh, the, the, the women that are the first to admit that they're not perfect, uh, Lord, but they love you, and they dearly love their children, and they dearly want their children to be saved so that they don't spend eternity in hell. Father, I've, I've seen their tears. I've felt their heart pain uh, as they, they just, it's the first thing on their mind. And Lord, there's so many that have grown up in, in this church. And I pray some of them will end up hearing this message and they would think of their godly mom who loved them and prayed for them. Maybe didn't always say the right thing, but Lord, they saw their mom's heart, their mom's faith, and it was genuine. It was sincere. It was not hip hypocritical. Father, I pray that even now, uh, young people that are now adults, would consider the influence of their godly mother and would come to faith because of that. And Father, we thank you that you are willing and ready to save all who call upon you. And Lord, I ask you to do that mighty work because of the influence of moms. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, let's take out your hymn books, please. Let's stand, and we will close in song. All right, let's turn to hymn 404, I Am Thine, O Lord, hymn 404.
to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to Thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to Thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, Thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before Thy throne I stand. I kneel in prayer and with Thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me near. Blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest it. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to Thy precious side. Amen. You're dismissed.